Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. In the last episode, I battled my way across Nugget Bridge, won myself a golden nugget. That's right, folks, a golden nugget. That thing's worth a lot of money. It's like 5,000 bucks. Woo! Um, and then I started making my way towards Bill's house, and I caught an Oddish along the way, which is actually really lucky of me. There are a lot of shitty Pokemon on these two routes connecting to Bill's house, so I am pretty excited about that. Uh, in this episode, we'll fight the last trainer up there and make it to Bill's house, and if we have time, I'll even, you know, attempt the Cerulean City Gym. Yeah, it should be pretty good. It should be a pretty good episode if I do say so myself. Mm hmm Yep. Yeah, mm hmm Well, let's get this party started! Uh, I also have some really exciting news. Uh, a friend of mine from work, he actually started his own Nuzlocke challenge using a Pokemon... I don't know if it's Fire Red or Leaf Green. One of the two. Anyways, the idea behind this is he's not going to be recording and putting up posting on YouTube by any means or like that. Um, he's just going to be doing it for fun, keeping up to me work to where I am in terms of progress, and then at various points during the game we plan to uh, battle each other. So that should be pretty exciting. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, if I'm just going to like record myself during the matches or I'm going to put post commentary. Um, I've never actually done a trainer battle and commentated at the same time, so it might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, also, it might be a little boring just as we're trying to, you know, predict each other's moves. He has the one advantage that he can watch my videos and see my move sets and, and whatnot. So I don't know if it'll be a case of me trying to do something I normally wouldn't do so that he's caught under predicting. But then again, I might be over predicting a lot of the time. But yeah, it should be a good time. We'll see how it goes. Um, if you guys like that idea, you know, leave a leave a comment in the description. And if you know if if it works out, maybe I'll even uh, send out like an open challenge to other people out there that are watching the videos. Uh, so you know, should be fun. Should be good. Anyways, up here we will find Bill's house, and Bill is nowhere to be found. But there is a Clefairy. But it's not a real Clefairy. It's Bill. What the hell happened? He screwed up an experiment and combined himself with a Clefairy. Now he wants our help. A cell separation system. Hmm. That seems pretty familiar. Anyways, he's gonna go into one chamber and we turn on the PC, and the teleporter's gonna work its magic. Ta da! And just like that, we rescue Bill. But, uh, you know what I just noticed? If he, you know, if he, if he combined himself with the Clefairy, shouldn't the Clefairy come out of this end too? Like, where did it go? Did it... Was it killed? Was it sacrificed? Maybe. Anyways, we come talk to Bill. He wants to show us his Pokemon. We don't really want to see it. So, uh, in order to thank us, he gives us the SS and ticket. Um, this is going to be used in Vermilion City. Uh, there's not really much of an explanation of why we need it now, but it is a very useful key item. So now that we've talked to Bill, we can make our way back to the Pokemon Center to heal up and take on Misty of Cerulean City Gym. I guess I'll just cut to the Pokemon Center. It'll be easier that way. And I'm back. Um, after healing up my Pokemon, I switched Goddard into first place just because being a Grass-type Pokemon and this being a Water-type Gym, she's going to be very, very useful. Uh, so useful in fact that if I didn't have her, I would probably be struggling just as hard, if not more, than I did when I was fighting Brock. Just because Misty's two water type Pokemon are actually very, very strong. Uh, so first up, this Pokemon trainer has a Horsey. Uh, you know, it's not that much of a threat as a Horsey. It is a water type Pokemon, so any water type move is going to be doing minimum damage, as you can see. Uh, Bubble's a pretty interesting move in that it has the occasional chance of a... Uh, Reducing your Pokemon's speed, which is pretty annoying, but since Oddish has crappy speed anyways, I'm not really too concerned because I know she's not going to be getting the first hit whatsoever. Uh, and Bullet Seed, holy crap, working that horsey over. Uh, next up is a Shelter. This is actually a Water and Ice type Pokemon. Uh, ice type is actually super effective against uh, Grass type, so if I can kill this thing quickly. Oh, jeez, look at that damage. And yeah, one hit kill. Awesome. Don't have to worry about that at all. 
So scratch what I said about that ice type of attack. Actually, no, you should probably keep that in mind. Because you're not going to be as awesome or fortunate as I am at this point, I bet. Uh, and Goddish leveled up, trying to learn uh, Sweet Powder, which is actually a really useful move, and I could probably actually make use of it in this little uh, um, upcoming area, I'd say. Get rid of Poison Powder, just because I don't like poisoning Pokemon, especially if I'm trying to catch them. Uh, I don't want to accidentally poison the Pokemon, catch it, forget I poisoned it, walk a couple steps, and then kill it. Because you know how that would just be, uh, you know, insult to injury. Uh, before we fight Misty, there is one other Pokemon trainer here. Uh, she only has one Pokemon, uh, though it is pretty high level. Uh, and that is a... Da -da -da -da, Goldeen. Uh, interestingly enough, I don't know if Goldeen actually knows Peck in this version, but Peck is a flying type move, so if you do use a grass type Pokemon against her, just be cautious that she can use that, and it could, you know, kill one of your Pokemon if you're not expecting it. Uh, hopefully I can kill this Goldeen off with one or two bullet seeds before that happens. Oh, it also knows Corn Attack, which is, uh, whoa, whoa. Not super effective, but did quite a chunk of damage. Oh, critical hit to finish it off. Always nice. Always nice indeed. And just like that, Oddish is, you know, kicking ass. Taking out two trainers on her own. Now, I should probably heal up before fighting Misty, but I'm just so crazy, I'm going to go ahead and fight her straight up. And I'm probably going to really regret this. But here we go. Misty has two Pokemon, a Staryu and a Starmie. Um, they both have very similar movesets, actually. Yeah, there's only one move that's different. Um, Staryu knows Tackle, Harden, Recover, and Water Pulse. Water Pulse being the only Water-type move that it knows, uh, which actually it's most dangerous Water-type move at this point in the game. It's, uh, it can decimate a team even if you're not, you know, weak to it. I know we'll probably see that a Water Pulse is going to do a shitload of damage to, uh, to Godish. Um, so my strategy for this is to try and put the Pokemon to sleep, uh, use Absorb, get my hit points back if I need to, and if not, just bullet see the crap out of it. But as you can see, Absorb is doing a crap load of damage, which is always nice. Oh, I should probably mention that Sleep Powder is not a 100% chance of putting the Pokemon to sleep. Um, I think it might be like 80% or so. So don't always rely on it too much. And, oh, ooh, Super Potion. Oh yeah, so even though Brock never used items in his Pokemon battle... Oh, look at that damage, wow. Um, from this point forward, Gym Leaders can use items to heal their Pokemon, such as like Super Potions or Full Restores. Um, I'm, I'm thinking they can have two items to use in each battle, if I'm not mistaken. I think that makes sense. Uh, it's kind of annoying this battle, especially since uh, Misty also has Recover on her two Pokemon. Uh, next up is Starmie. Uh, this Pokemon knows Swift as opposed to Tackle, but then it also knows Harden, Recover, and Water Pulse. So I'm going to try to put it to sleep. And as you can see, that's Swift. Uh, Swift has 100% accuracy, so even if you were to sand attack it to the point where it has zero accuracy, it would always hit. So let's try and heal up a little bit of hit points, just in case it wakes up early. And as you can see, Starmie has a lot more defense than Staryu, which, you know, you would figure since it's the evolution of Staryu. But, you know, just in case you didn't know that. Uh, Starmie is actually a really good Pokemon. It's a water and psychic type Pokemon, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that sounds right. And, um, and it can learn great, great movesets. Like, you can teach this thing Thunderbolt. You can teach this thing Psychic. It knows Recover. You can teach it, you know, a water type move like Water Pulse or, you know, even Surf. And, uh, yeah, I remember using this thing in the first gen, and it was an awesome sweeper. Just crazy, ridiculous sweeping ability. But, yeah, it's not really getting that much of a chance. Hopefully we can kill it off. Oh, yeah, it didn't even land one hit point of damage on me. Bala. Good job, Godish. And level 20. Man, Godish is leveling up ridiculously fast. Almost to the point where Dixie Kong is getting left behind in the dust. Which I guess is a bad thing and a good thing. And so for defeating Misty, we get the Cascade Badge, some money, and she's also going to give us a TM. Uh, which one is it? 
Oh yeah, we can learn cut later on and we can use cut from now on. But uh, TM3 teaches us Water Pulse. Um, since I don't really have a Water type Pokemon at this point, I'm not going to use it. Um, but yeah, that was the second gym. Not too shabby if I say so myself. But if you don't have a Grass type Pokemon, uh, you don't have an Electric type Pokemon, uh, it can pose a little bit of difficulty, uh, especially if your Pokemon are under level. So I'm just going to heal up. And uh, next up, now that we're done with Cerulean City, we're going to be making our way towards Vermilion City, uh, where the SS Anne is actually located. Um, yeah, so we'll go up this way. And if you guys remember, before the policeman was blocking this house, saying that you know Team Rocket came in and rough things up. Now that we've talked to Bill, we can actually go in here. Uh, if you talk to those people, they're pretty upset that Team Rocket kind of ruined their stuff. Um, I'm actually going to switch Dixie in the first place, because she needs experience. And lo and behold, Team Rocket is still here. Which is kind of sad, because the policeman is standing right outside in the front, not doing his job. But, we're going to do it for him, because we are awesome like that. First up is a Machop, level 17. This is actually a little worrisome. I don't think Dixie can handle it. I don't think Otters can handle it either, so I'm just going to send in Hope and play it safe. Get that super effective move on. Especially if it's using Focus Energy. Uh, focus Energy, you know, it's you sacrifice a turn to build up energy, and then the next hit that you do, you do like maximum damage or something ridiculous. But of course he went ahead and used Leer and, you know, kind of negated that entire process. Which, you know, I'm not going to complain. I you know I love not taking damage. I just love it. Love, love, love it. Uh, next up is a Drowsy. Uh, which is a new Pokemon we haven't seen at this point. It's a uh, Psychic type Pokemon. Uh, they're not too bad. Um, they're a little bit bulky, a little bit slow. Um, they're not. I personally wouldn't use one on my team. Oh, and it's putting me to sleep. God damn you. I would not use one on my team unless it was evolved into a Hypno, but uh, there are other Psychic Pokemon out there that are better. Um, this thing is really just a pain in the butt. It'll put you to sleep, it'll use Disable so you can't use a certain move. Keeps them missing, so that's pretty good. And woke up, finish it off, get this battle over with, please. You know what it actually looks like? It looks like an anteater dipped in chocolate. Am I the only one that doesn't see that? Go back, rewind the video, take a look. I'm pretty sure it is an elephant or a you know an anteater dipped in chocolate. And huzzah! So for defeating Team Rocket, he's gonna give us back TM28, which he stole from the man in there. Uh, TM28 teaches the move Dig. Uh, I'm not sure who I'm going to give this to just yet. Probably going to hold on to it. Uh, I have a couple of different options. Uh, if we come over here to Route 9, there's a, uh, a bush here. I was going to say 6. Uh, there's a tree that we can't cut down yet. We need to move cut. Uh, we'll get it in the near future. But if we head down this way, we are now in Route 5. And there's some new grass, meaning we can get a new Pokemon, and it's going to be... Oh, an Oddish. I already have an Oddish. Lame. Okay, well, let's run away. I was really hoping for a Meowth. Uh, there's also Pidgeys and Spearows and stuff like that, but uh, a Meowth would have been awesome. Uh, up there, I kind of missed the queue there. I went off the ledge. But up there is the uh, Pokemon training area. Daycare Center. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, what this is, is a uh, an NPC where you can leave a Pokemon there. Um, as you, you know, take steps over time. Uh, the Pokemon will actually gain experience, gain levels. Uh, it's pretty good if you don't want to level up a Pokemon yourself. The only downside to this is that um, you don't get to choose which moves it learns as it levels up. Um, it's completely random, which is kind of crappy, because if a good move gets you know erased for a crappy move, there's no way of going back and getting it, and kind of defeats the purpose of having a Pokemon. Uh, if we head down here, and we talk to this man, he'll tell us that he's on guard, he's thirsty, and he's not going to let us go. But, we have an alternative route, and it is here, the underground tunnel. But before we go in there, talk to this trainer, she'll ask for a Nidoran female, no, Nidoran male, sorry. Nidoran female is the one with the other one pointing down. Um, so yeah, if you have the other opposite type gender, you can trade for her, not really that good of a deal. But at this point, if you want a new Pokemon, there's always an option. Um, I think we're running low on time, so next time on Pokemon Fire Red, we're going to take the underground tunnel and make our way to Vermilion City. Until then, see you later.